Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Don't discuss uh, a video on basically the increasing decreasing test for derivatives. Go over a proof on it. Uh, basically, uh, increasing decreasing test or the ID test. Just to uh, go over the definition, it states if f of x is greater than zero or the derivative is greater than zero on an interval, then f is increasing on that interval. But if the derivative is less than zero on interval, then f is decreasing on that interval. And now the visual proof of this is pretty straightforward because uh, we know that f of x or the derivative, I mean f prime of x or the derivative is basically the slope of a function. So if we were to graph, let's just say a random continuous function like this right here in continuous because this derivative exists. This is greater than zero or less than zero. So when we draw something like this, this has a positive slope. And then as you can see here, this is a negative slope because the, the slope is just a derivative. And this just means the derivative is less than zero here and greater than zero. Let's like go f, f prime. Um, yeah, f prime uh, derivative is less than zero. And here is greater than zero. And then at this point, it's going to obviously be zero, like I showed in my earlier videos. You can see those in the video link below. Basically, to, but to prove this concretely, you're going to have to use the mean value theorem. So yeah, so uh, basically to provide concrete proof, we need this mean value theorem. I went over the proof of it in my video link below, but uh, just quickly recap on it. If you have, let's say, y equals f of x, and the following is true. Basically, this function f is continuous on a closed interval a and b, but f is differentiable on an open interval a to b, then there is a number c such that... Uh, well, inside a and b, such that the derivative is equal to, well, f, fb minus fa, all divided by b minus a, or basically the average slope of the uh, going from a to b. And you can see it visually like this. If this is a function f of x right here, and you're going from a to b right here, all it's saying is that the derivative, um, at, like there has to be at one point f of c, at the c point that this derivative matches exactly with this one right here. So this derivative and this one, this should be exactly f prime of c. And that's at this point right here. So this, then you can see visually it should always be true. Yeah, so now we'll use this mean value theorem to basically prove uh, for basically part A of this increasing decreasing test, which is if the derivative is greater than zero interval, then the function is increasing on the interval. And to prove that, let's just let basically uh, let x yeah, x1 and x2 basically be any numbers inside yeah, inside a, an interval such that basically x1 is less than x2 right here. Yeah, and now so we have this condition uh, basically we're just going from x1 to x2. So we also know that we're given that the derivative is greater than zero. So if the derivative is greater than zero on this interval, then because it's di it's differentiable or this derivative exists everywhere, it's also continuous inside this interval. Yeah, and I'll just write that down. Because derivative exists in, in, the, in this interval, it's also continuous at x1 and uh, from x1 to x2. So now we have the conditions met for the mean value theorem. So it's, it's differentiable and it's also continuous. So then there has to exist a number f prime of c. And also just another note, uh, if you want to see proof of why this has to be true, if its derivative exists, it has to be continuous, you can see the video link below. But it's basically you can't take the derivative of a discontinuous function at, at that discontinuity. But anyway, so back to this one right here, since the derivative exists everywhere and it's continuous x1, x2, there has to be a number such that f of x2 minus f of x1, so this number c, and uh, where x2 minus x1 all divided by x2 minus x1. So this has to exist. And now we're also given that the derivative is greater than zero. So then this is greater than zero. And But we also know that x2 and x1 are greater than zero. So these two right here are greater than zero. So then this top part has to be greater than zero if this is going to be greater than zero. So this can't be a, a less than zero. Otherwise, the whole thing would be less than zero. So we have this condition that f of x2 minus f of x1 has to be greater than zero. And if it's greater than zero, uh, this just means that f of x2, rearrange it, is greater than, f, just put this on the right side, f of x1. If f of x2 is greater than f of x1, this is increasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is increasing, and basically we've proved the part A of the theorem.
And now to prove uh, for part B, which basically states so over here, scroll up, if the derivative is less than zero in interval and the function is decreasing. This, you could use pretty much the ex uh, almost exact same proof as this one, except we have this part right here. This, uh, this number uh, C or this derivative at C has to be less than zero because the derivative is, is going to be less than zero. So we're given that uh, f prime of x is less than zero. So then f prime of c, the number above, is going to be less than zero, which this equals to f of, yeah, f of x2 minus f of x1 all divided by x2 minus x1. This is less than zero. And then since this is less than zero, and we know that again, this top part, then this bottom part, x2 minus x1, this is going to be greater than zero because we're given that x2 is greater than x1. So now this top part has to be less than zero. So we're going to have to have fx2 minus f of x1 as, as basically less than zero. And if this is less than zero, let's just move this to the right. We're going to have fx2 is less than f of x1. So this means as you move from x1 to x2, you're decreasing. Oh, and you can just write that down. And there's there is our proof for this one. Let's put a check mark there. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this video, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.